Hello. Let me just adjust this. We're good. This is a different setup than you might have seen before. And you can see these boxes right here. Well, that's because I'm moving out of this apartment at the start of January. So it's quite sad and sentimental because my whole YouTube journey started in this apartment, like a year and a half's worth of shooting and content and learning how to do this whole YouTube thing, talking in front of the camera like this. So, hey, it is what it is. Change is good. Someone said that, some philosopher. It's too simple maybe, maybe no philosopher ever said that, but it's good I think. And as per usual, I'm here to do my end of year roundup. I'm not on the hill in my hometown for the second year in a row because I'm still here in Budapest. I'm still gonna hopefully give you guys some insights that I've learned and maybe you'll be able to resonate with them and we can all take these learning lessons that I've experienced and maybe that you've experienced together into 2023. After I sip this lovely ginger tea. So the first one is noticing how much time I waste in the little gaps of minutes that occur throughout the day. Personally, when I wanna sit down and do work, I feel the need to always have like half an hour or an hour of dedicated focus towards an edit or script writing or whatever it might be at responding to emails, for example. And if I only have like a three minute gap, a five minute gap, I really focus, I really struggle to just sit down and utilize those three minutes to write a paragraph or write a sentence of a script, for example. But I've realized throughout the day, I'm wasting just so many minutes that would actually add up to an hour or maybe two hours if I actually was doing something productive rather than wasting those minutes scrolling on Instagram, for example, or watching a random YouTube video. Not like this one, this is a good YouTube video, but other random YouTube videos that aren't particularly helpful. And I definitely feel like this is a skill that you can actually actually grow like it's not just something that you're innately cursed with to need an hour half an hour to focus because I read a really good book that helped change and shift a lot of my mindsets around this it's a book by Matthew Dix called Some Days Today and there's a quote that I want to read for you that really shifted my mindset where he says minutes matter Every single one of them matters. The problem is that many of us discount the value of minutes and overestimate the value of an hour or a day or a weekend. We dither away our minutes as if they were useless, assuming that creativity can only happen in increments of an hour or a day or more. What a bunch of hooney, honey, hooey? Huey, I don't really use that, I'm British. We don't really use Huey, Huey, I don't think. Quotes like this from the book and other chapters look really opened my eyes to how much time I was wasting just generally in my life. Even with things like traveling from point A to point B, instead of just sitting there scrolling on Instagram, I could be reading a, a book on my Kindle app on my phone, or I could be doing something on Notion, like write a few sentences for my next YouTube project. And for me, it was just training my brain to realize that, hey, these are minutes that are going away and they'll disappear forever. And you can utilize them to actually progress your life forward in a way that will actually make you less stressed because you'll sit down at your computer and be like, oh no, I've got to do a YouTube video for this day. And I've already written like multiple bullet points and basically wrote like a skeleton of the whole idea already during these little minutes. And I'm like, oh, okay. And I actually did this during the summer where I went to a concert concert to see Elderbrook and during the act change before he started I think there was like a half an hour 40 minute gap and a friend of mine had just left so I was just there on my own and I can either just sit there like an introvert scrolling Instagram or go talk to people but I felt like I wanted to be a bit of an introvert but I wanted to be a productive introvert so I just opened up my Notion app and just started script writing my next video and I wrote so much it was absolutely crazy to the point where when I got back to my computer a day or so later to actually work on this script in the normal way that I would which was sat my laptop, I was like, oh my God, I've basically already scripted this video. I can write the rest of it so quickly. And that just blew my mind to think, wow, that half an hour could have easily been wasted on random, unproductive, unhelpful YouTube videos that don't benefit my life or give me new ideas. And I made these 30 minutes super productive. So it's really shifted my mindset, this um, new understanding of putting a lot of heavy importance on these minutes that will then combine into multiple hours during the week and many more within a whole month. But I'm not completely sold on the whole philosophy behind this because there are some times where I just wanna sit on a tram and just look out the window and daydream and think about life and other things. Like, I think there's probably an unhealthy balance that you could do with this where every single day you're just like, I've gotta be productive. These minutes matter every little minute. So I, I, I'm not trying to be too strict about this. I'm just trying to understand that, hey, if I have the energy to scroll for Instagram, I probably have the energy to write something on Notion or read a book. And when I don't have energy for any of these things, 
it's totally fine to just look out the window and have a little nap <laughs> or whatever my body needs at that particular time. Okay, number two is how bloody addictive the YouTube algorithm can actually be. Now, I've watched YouTube for as long as I can remember, being 10, 12 years old, being completely into the early YouTubers like Smosh and Ray William Johnson and, you know, early PewDiePie when he was just coming up. And a lot of them obviously made videos when they got it where they said, oh, I have creative burnout or the YouTube alg algorithm is very addictive. I personally never had that problem until one of my videos went semi-viral this year where uh, I hit my first 1,000 subscribers and I was just sat there in my um, Airbnb in Barcelona just waiting for the ticker to count over to 1,000. So I'd be like, oh my God, I hit 1,000 subscribers like way sooner than I ever would have thought. And yeah, like ever since then, when every video comes out, I can see myself just being pulled into the, oh, I need to check the views, what's going on, what are the impressions, all this stuff. And it, I have kind of caught glimpses of it being incredibly unhealthy <laughs> and to the point where it can just take over your life, like questioning, oh, could I have made this video better? The last one had more impressions. The last one was uh, a three out of 10 last videos. And this one is seven, for example. This one's probably gonna be really low as well, to be fair, because the only people who have seen my other stuff will care to listen to me talk candidly like this in front of the camera. It's pretty crazy how, how something that a lot of people have said is the case, then you reach it and you're like, yeah, they're right. It is very difficult and no amount of preparation for this kind of exposure of putting your life on camera or putting yourself out in front of a camera can prepare you for um, the unexpected pressure that you will begin to feel because of this. Luckily, my growth has slowed down quite a bit since that video came out and I'm really seeing a tiny trickle of subscribers every month. I've been hovering around the same amount of subscribers that I have right now for a long time because uh, people have been watching my new content and being like, hey, that's that's not a BTS review that you did. Well, that's not an Apple breakdown that you did. I thought you were the Apple guy. I'm not really the Apple guy. I like Apple, but I'm not the Apple guy. It's kind of given me a taste of what, my, what I might be expecting in the future as this channel grows. So I am grateful for getting this early in my first year and a half um, versus like, three, four years later down the line. So it's somewhat prepared me, sort of, given me a little taste. But in a way, um, subscriber count is nice to look at. It does make you feel quite good. But my average view on videos is actually pretty low. Like I'd say on average, I'm getting like 100 views a video. It will slowly climb up as more people find these kind of videos on my channel. But it, it feels weird to have like, a core audience maybe of 100 views and then to have like over 4,000 subscribers. In a way, I would kind of prefer to have way less subscribers and more views that kind of correlate between the subscribers. So so yeah, it does, it does feel odd that having a subscriber number is nice, but as a creator, I would prefer the amount of core audience, the people who are watching this to watch all of my videos and, and kind of be a part of this community that I'm trying to build uh, versus just people subscribing to me because they saw one viral video and then they don't want to watch or care about anything else that I have to say. Yeah, I'm not asking people to unsubscribe <laughs> necessarily if you, but yeah, maybe you should if you, if you don't vibe with any of this content um, because there's no point me popping up on your feed, my face on your feed if I can't give you any value or insights or connect with you in any way. And last but not least, which is probably one that you might have heard many times before, but exercise is the simplest form of a productivity hack or mood hack that you can do. Now I've gone through very odd phases of exercise where I'd go for months and months and months of training a lot. And then I would basically dip down to just running once or twice a week. I felt fine. I felt pretty healthy. Luckily I don't put on weight very quickly. So I can physically look at my body and say, hey, there's a pretty trim looking guy, but I know I'm not getting a six pack or anything and I don't feel a big difference, but I started to, in the last few months, I really started to take my exercise regime really seriously, like going to the gym more, more than I've ever done, basically exercising every day, Monday to Friday and starting to do weekends as well. And it's unbelievable how at the end of the day, no matter what my mood is or no matter how much productivity I actually did towards whatever goal I set for the day, the fact that I went to the gym or did an exercise in the morning, I feel amazing. Like I feel way less harsh on myself to say, you idiot, Adam, you didn't do any exercise. Oh, you're a failure. Oh, you're, oh, you're an idiot, Adam. You didn't do no productivity. There was no progress towards whatever. I don't feel like that. I just feel like, oh, I went to the gym. I did one good thing for myself today. I did like one thing that has moved the needle forward a little bit. And exercise for me is the simplest form of, of doing this, of moving this 
metaphorical needle. And also just getting into any form of exercise just trains your ability to push through that initial, oh, I don't wanna wake up, my bed is so warm and comfy, my girlfriend's right here, my girlfriend, gym, girlfriend, gym, ah. And then you go to the gym because I genuinely feel like this resistance training or pushing through that uncomfort can apply to so many other areas of life. And I never ever get to the gym and stand there in front of the weights and say, oh, now I don't wanna work out, I'm going home. It's literally just the pulling myself out of bed, putting my clothes on, going to the gym or going for that run. That is the hard part. And then as soon as I'm there, I, be, I never ever regret that decision that I made. And really like exercise, that, that step, step-by-step -step process is a metaphor that can be applied to so many other areas of life, business. Talking to a girl, for example, it's all the same kind of steps of, I don't wanna do this thing, I'm nervous, or I can't be bothered, I'm tired. You go there, you do the thing, and then you basically have no regrets whatsoever that you took the steps towards pushing through that discomfort. So if exercise is something that you actually wanna start doing for 2023, one thing that I would recommend is try and give yourself as much variety as possible. So I go to the gym minimum two times a week. The rest of the time I'm running, I do jujitsu class on Wednesday, I do yoga on weekends when my yoga teacher's available. Because if I was going to the gym every day, Monday to Friday, honestly, I would like hate it. <laughs> Even if I was doing different exercise, I personally just need to have different forms of exercise. Fridays I play football, for example. So having something different every single day just keeps exercise interesting and also probably benefits me in a lot of ways because my cardio is pretty good from years of running. So it's nice to have days where I'm playing football where I can flex my cardio, sprinting up and down the pitch. And then in the gym, I'm still kind of a beginner stage and I have to spend a lot of time just building up my weights uh, with a bench press, for example. So yeah, like try and add variety to your, to your exercise regime, try different sports and exercises and, and also group activities for sport because it's fine going to the gym on your own. It's better to go with a friend if you have a friend that you can drag along, but it's also really good to do team sports. Like playing football for me on Fridays is so much fun because it's just a collaboration. We're doing it as a group. It connects me to what it was like to be a kid and do sports that weren't just solo activities. And we do so much solo anyway. Like if you're watching this, you might be a creative um, kind of entrepreneur or a creative individual who spends a lot of time just working from home. Like I do, as you probably saw in this other video right here. So try and find a group activity of some kind because these people who are also on the same journey as you within this particular sport are gonna help carry you through uh, the times when you can't be bothered and then you get there and you're like, yeah, we're bros. Give it a try. And that's it for this year. Thank you to everyone who I know personally who's uh, commented and left very kind messages on all of my content throughout this year. And for all the new people who've just discovered me from the videos that I've put out, I really appreciate appreciate uh, you watching and interacting with me and also roasting me, especially on the Apple video when uh, I realized that I've been saying HDR wrong all my life because I should have said HDR. And yeah, we'll see what 2023 brings. And this is the last time you'll see me in this apartment on YouTube. I made a playlist over here with all of the other year reviews that I've done throughout the years if you're curious to go back and take a look at them. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Do you know how much I've missed English tea and I'm gonna have it when I'm back in England? Oh, I can't wait. Crave it so badly. Bye for real this time. Hello.